Do you wonder why lactans are now a problem? Well then, stay tuned and watch this video. Your lady Salome is going to answer two questions. The body's defense against lactans and why lactans have become a problem now. Welcome to Ezra Wellness, where you learn proving ways to healthy living. This is your lady Salome Adamako. I'm an ex by profession. If you want to learn proving ways to healthy living, subscribe to my channel. And when you do, click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my favorite videos. Today, I'm answering two of viewers' questions. Question number one Salome, you always keep talking about stop eating this food, wheat, corn. This food has been around so many years. How come all of a sudden they are a problem now? And you keep saying they contain lactin, they contain lactin. Does the body have any defense against this lactin at all? And the question number two is, why is lactin a problem now? So I will answer the first question. Lactins are plant proteins that the plant uses as a defense mechanism. Studies have shown that these lactins causes leaky gut in the smaller intestines and this leaky gut causes things that are not supposed to leak into the body to leak in. They have been seen to be the root cause of most diseases, if not all diseases. Especially autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, and things like that. So, today I want to answer the question, does the body have any defense against lactin? Yes, the body has some defense against lactin. God made us fearfully and wonderful. As the word says, because God made us this way, he has given us some beautiful defense against this lactin. Our defense number one is the mucous membrane and the mucus that line the gastrointestinal tract or our digestive tract. So these mucus, they are lining there that when you eat lactins, they produce more mucus to keep the lactins in the digestive tract so that they will go down smoothly without getting to the lining of the wall where they cause their problem and get into the body. If you want to learn more about these lactins, check out my video, What is in Your Food, and you will know exactly what these lactins are and how they cause their problem in the body. So this mucous memory is our first defense. That's why when you eat spicy pepper, you see that your nose runs a lot and you have a lot of saliva in your mouth and everything because the body is producing more to trust, uh, trying to trap the lactins. And if not, they also produce more mucus to line the esophagus so that these lactins will stay in the digestive tract where they're supposed to be. So the next time you use your spicy pepper and your nose starts to run, you realize you're just taking in some lactins. Okay, our defense number two is the acid in our stomach. This acid is, the pH is very low. That means it's highly, it's a high hydrochloric acid. And those acid, we need it. The acid in our stomach, we need this acid to help us to digest our protein. And lactins are plant protein. So this acid help us to break it down. So that is also another defense that we have against lactin. The third defense that we have against lactin is the bacteria in the stomach. The friends that I talk about all the time. Yes, I love those friends, you know, because they live in our stomach we are their host, they live in us, they keep us healthy and intact. So these friends also eat some of these lactins. So at the end of the day, they also try to eat them and prevent them from getting to the lining where they will cause their problem. And the last defense that we have is our wonderful brain. That when we eat something and we realize that this thing doesn't agree with us, we stay far away from it. So that the next time we will not eat it again to get any heartburn from it. So these are the four defenses that we have. So that answer your question? Yes, that is our defense against lactin. So then why, if we have the defense, Salome, how come the lactins is a problem now? Well, the problem is that these defense that we have, we have destroyed them. You say to yourself, how have we destroyed them? Our use of antibiotic. You know, the bacteria in our stomach, they are bacteria. Antibiotic is used to kill bacteria. Don't get me wrong, antibiotics are really good. There are some diseases that you get, you need antibiotic to survive. It has saved countless of life. But in the same way, this antibiotic, unfortunately, when you take them to kill the bacteria in the blood, it also destroys the bacteria in the stomach. 
because every bacteria is bacteria. That is why when some people stay on antibiotic for a long period of time, they develop some antibiotic associated diarrhea. Some people could have this diarrhea for so long to the extent that they would need to have a fecal transplant, stool from somebody else's stomach to be, plant, uh, to be transplanted into their stomach so that they will be able to have bacteria again before this diarrhea will stop. So the bacteria are really, really important. But unfortunately, our taking of antibiotics will destroy them. You say to yourself, Salome, I haven't taken antibiotics before. I don't, do you eat conventionally raised chicken and meat? Well, if you do, the chicken and the beef and the pork, they give them antibiotic. Because of the condition under which they are raised, they eat the antibiotic and then the antibiotic ends up in the meat, their milk, their egg. So when you eat this produce, you are also eating the antibiotic indirectly. And every antibiotic is antibiotic. So you continue to eat them, it destroys the bacteria in the stomach, unfortunately. Also, I want you to picture this bacteria in your stomach as a thick rainforest where you have a variety of trees, very healthy green. That is how the stomach looks like with all these beautiful bacteria. But when you take antibiotic, it's like lighten um, a match. You throw it into that rainforest and then it destroys it. That is what happens anytime you take antibiotic. So then over time, you have to start to try to grow again. So what I want you to know is that the next time that you have a cold and you're pushing your doctor, you're thinking it's bronchitis, you gave yourself a diagnosis, you want antibiotic. Well, think about it twice before you take antibiotic, unless you really need it. Our next thing that will be used to destroy this defense is the use of terms, omeprazole, nexium, things like that. Our use of acid reducers. Acid in the stomach, we need it to digest protein. So when we take this acid reducers, that means we are losing our ability to digest protein. Every protein, including this plant protein, and that is why the lactin have been on the loose because there is no acid to digest them. The other defense that we have, thing that we use against the defense is also the use of NSAIDs like ibuprofen, Advil. Some people, because they have pain, some people don't even have pain. They need to take Advil to be able to sleep at night. You've been taking it for so long. And because of that, the Advil, what it does is it causes irritation in the small intestines and is able to make holes to make the job of the lactans very easy and get it into the blood. So you've been taking uh, uh, um, ibuprofen or Advil every night because that makes you sleep. Oh my dear, you, don't know, you have no idea what you're doing to your intestine. So these medications is written on them used for temporary. You're not supposed to use them for a long period of time. The other thing that have destroyed our defense against this lactin is the use of glyphosate. The, main, the active ingredient in Roundup, the weedicides. This glyphosate is sprayed on almost all conventionally raised um, crops. Talk about your soya, your corn, your wheat, oats. Everything have glyphosate in them. And this glyphosate, studies have shown that it destroys the bacteria in the stomach. And bacteria is one of our defense against lactin. The other thing that have caused this lactin to be a problem is because of the amount of lactins that we are throwing to the mucus that we have in the stomach. Think about it, a typical meal. In the morning, you have pancake and eggs. The pancake have wheat in them, which contains lactin. The eggs have your antibiotic because the chicken were fed antibiotic. If you have sausage, any pancake thing that you could think about, have a dose of the antibiotic in it. Think about lunch in case you have pasta with some tomato sauce, with some cheese on it. The tomato is loaded with lactin. The pasta is coming from wheat. And then the cheese, the cow is also loaded with antibiotic. Dinner time, let's say you have sandwich, you have anything like that. Sandwich is also um, wheat. If you have tomato with a sandwich, it also have lactins in it. Your lettuce may be safe, but if you have any meat with it, it might be a source of antibiotic. And because we've been throwing this so much against the lining of the digestive tract, the mucus that is supposed to help it have been depleted. And the bacteria that have to help us produce more mucus, we've destroyed them. That is why lactins have become a problem now. You say to yourself, Salome, how do I know that I'm sensitive to lactin? 
Well, if you have any disease conditions, like cardiac issues like high blood pressure, if you have metabolic issues like diabetes, insulin resistance, if you have skin issues like eczema, if you have, like think about it, if you have like wheat belly, or you have like a big belly around your waist here, then possibly you have leaky gut. How are you going to know? The only way to know it is either you go to a doctor to check it, or you try out the plant products diet. By the first week, eliminating every lactin containing food out of your diet. The second week, you introduce some resistance starches with some vegetables. And then the third week, you start to introduce some of these lactins. And at this time, you're going to employ your wonderful brain. So that if you eat something and your brain is telling you that, mm, I feel hard brain, you, you watch it so that you don't eat that thing again instead of taking chumps for it. You say to yourself, Salome, you believe all this? Yes, I do. Because in the Plant Paradox book, he, this doctor is research, Dr. Gandhi research is, he put, he's based on his patient. He put him on this diet and then over time, their diseases resolves. And myself, I'm a testimony to this because I put myself on this diet. The blood pressure issue that I was supposed to have, I did not have it. My weight, I lost effortlessly and have kept it off over a year now. And right now, I'm not struggling to keep off the weight because people ask me, but once I keep eating the correct food, the weights have stayed far away from me. So I know you're thinking, maybe I want to try this. I want to do that. Just give it a try. I know you could do it. If you don't want to do one week cleansing, you could do three days. You don't want to do that. Look at the lactin containing food and take them out of your diet and introduce more vegetables and you'll be happy that you did. The knee pain, the joint pain, the reason for you taking ibuprofen will all be taken away. Then you will not be taking these ibuprofen. Thank you so much for your time. Are you new to this channel? Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of my favorite videos. Well, do you have any question for me? Give it me a comment and let me know. And the next video may be based on your question. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your time. Remember, this is Ezra Wellness, where you learn proving ways to healthy living. Thank you.